Let's go back. Yes, sir. <laughs> what up, world? Welcome to another episode of RMT. That's Real Man Talk. It's your boy, Stan the Man. Coming to you today with another great conversation piece. And I want to thank you for joining me here on RMT. So on today, we got a very special guest. My boy, Kung Fu Kenny, Mr. Mixologist himself, man. Welcome to the show. Yes, sir. Thank you for having me. I'm truly excited and I'm blessed to be here. And I'm, man, I'm ready to get the show going, man. I'm excited. All righty, man. That's what I'm talking about. And look, man, before we get into the conversation, man, I want you to tell the audience, man, a little bit about your company, how you get started, man, and the name and everything. All right. Well, first off, I'm a true professional mixologist. You know, hence the name Nixologist, because my last name is Nix. It's incorporated within my business because that means it's a franchise. That means once you have a name attached to this, hey, I messed up my bad. You good? You good? But you good. But pretty much, you know, my last name is tied in and to the mixologist because I'm a true professional on and off of me mixing everything. So mixologist adding to it because, like I say, I'm a true professional. What I do, fully insured. Shoot, I'm the only one that I know of right now that use nothing but fresh ingredients, fresh lemons, fresh strawberries, blueberries, man, you name it. I can try my best to get it. And one thing I like to say is also, once you try, taste something so fresh, and you know how you start drinking stuff, they got all that additives into it and all that. It makes mm-hmm. you not just all natural stuff. I might end up changing my name to Mr. Organic, but I might say. <laughs> That's what's up, man. So, listen, man. I um, I appreciate you coming on the show, man, and your patience and everything. And um, uh, I kind of like what you was doing, and um, I like your style. You know, um, we working together. I saw you as a young man, and we was talking a little bit. And I was like, um, on today's subject, yo, we finna go ahead and get into it, y'all. Before I start rambling, we're gonna talk about, you know, just um, how is it? How is it being a young father, man? You know, in this day, in this days and time with social media and everybody against relationships and don't do this. And, you know, I need a high value, man. And all this, man, how is it just being a young father, man? Man, I will say it's not for the weak. You know, if you don't have like that level headedness and understand it like, hey, is my family first before me? Then you won't make it far in life, especially being married and a father. And man, that's one of the biggest things I learned is this sacrifice. That's a big thing, sacrificing your time, sacrificing, you know, things you want to do for yourself, but you still got to sacrifice to make this little person grow up and make sure they have what you never had growing up, you know, and also sacrificing, you know, you know, not hanging out with your friends all the time. You know, we all want to have a social mm-hmm. life, but hey, it's more important being home, being a homebody and going out there club and kicking it and spending all this unnecessary money. We could really be pouring into your household and to your kids and to your wife. That's one of the most important things I've learned, man. Especially, you know, I've been going on being married for three years. And yeah. having a daughter, like our first year being married, it's like, it's a true blessing. Mm-hmm. And, and you know what? I made the right decision. I do not regret it one bit. Being married the age of, what was it? 20? Damn. Yeah, I'm married 23. Yeah. 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 Man, and having a kid at 24, it's like, man, this is, this is what life's supposed to be, man. Mm-hmm. That's, that's good man that's good i i got i got married at 23 man i applaud you for the maturity level that you were at 23 because i i'm be honest i wasn't there you know yeah. what i'm saying <laughs> i was there to i partly want to be a father and be there for my family but a little bit of me still had a little kick in it you know a little party in me you know what i'm saying <laughs> i ain't gonna lie to the people you know because there's a lot of folks that listen to this that know me so I still had, you know, I had one foot in the family. I had one foot I wanted to be outside, you know what I'm saying? So I tried to fight between the two. But for the most part, if I was a young man, if I tell young men, it was like, it's good to do what Kenny said and put your all into your family and do what you need for your family because God will truly bless you, you know, in that aspect. So, man, another another question I wanted to ask you was like, you know, we we still on social media and in the day and age of the phone and social media and all that. Like, do a lot of your time do do the phone take away from your time or spending time with your uh, your daughter and teaching her different stuff? Do it take time? Where you find that balance in between the two? 
So it, it's kind of, how can I put it? It's a little hard too, more or less not hard, but you know, I got my business going. I'm trying to get out the ground and mm -hmm. get that grow and trying to be more engaged on social media. Cause before the end, before my business, I mean, I didn't know what was going on outside the world. To be honest, I was, a, right. I was underneath the rock. So mm -hmm. man, what's going on with Kenny? I don't know, man. We don't know. He's out there just mind his business. And, you know, that's one thing I learned was kind of put the phone down, point to a little person. Like I said earlier, come out, point to a little person that doesn't literally know anything. I'm so responsible of this individual learning you know, the things they need in life to succeed in the future. And that's one thing, you know, my family strongly preaches and my wife and I preach to our daughter, read. Reading is essential. Like mm -hmm. it's crazy. My aunt the other day, she gave us a challenge to, to read a thousand books to my daughter before kindergarten. Mm. Got a bookshelf full of books to where she'll go up there. She knows it's bedtime. She'll go in a daddy book. She'll grab it. Here you go read. She'll grab her books. She'll sit down and open it up. I said, man, I really started this trend. My wife started a trend. And mm -hmm. family, you know, the village poured into her and allow us to read books to her. You know, versus be on this phone scrolling all day, getting caught up in how what this person got going on, what that person doing. And then versus this point to a little person and everything is just and you see the results paying off once you pour into them. Like, you know, it's crazy. I taught my daughter her left and her right. I said, Show me your left hand. Left hand daddy, right hand daddy. I said, Dang, this is cool. I said, Show me your left foot. She just showed me the right foot. I said, see, you know, that's one thing some people don't understand, you know. These little people that catch on so fast, if they see you on the phone, they're gonna try to grab your phone, they're gonna scroll all day too. They can work an iPad better than you if you allow them to do it. Yeah. Personally, I don't want her to be so caught up in that social media or just on her a device to where, you know, she don't touch grass outside. Mm hmm but Yeah. That's good, man. And that's I'm I'm glad that <clears throat> that's another thing, having a good example. And having people around you that want to set the example for you being a good father to your child because right. there's so many examples out here that people they um they might not have had that village in order to show them so they basically just learning on the curve too because they didn't have an example they had nobody show them in social media telling them they should be this way this way you got people pulling you all different di direction and said when you got an example there that have raised children or have raised you to the point where you like, okay, I know what they saying is going to work for me too. You know, right. and I, I think that's a great thing. And uh, what, while we speaking on that, man, like how, how was that your, your father, how did he influence you, man, to, you know, just want to be a good father, you know, cause some of you, you know, you had a different influence. What, what, what was it about your dad that influenced you, you know, to be a good father? Man, more or less, everybody know, that know my dad, we got the same name, so it's funny. I mean, everybody know my father is the fun guy. Mm -hmm. It could be oh, the funniest thing. It can be pitch quiet. He going to do something. He going to yell. He going to do something, make somebody laugh no matter what. <laughs> and he don't care. And, you know, mm -hmm. he going to be himself and he be true to himself because that's the only thing you can do is be real to yourself. And, man, when you got – and he taught me how to just – don't care if people think, you know, if I have mm. a kid and I'm doing something to make her laugh, it's my little like, mm, what is he doing? I don't, I don't care about you. My mm. daughter, seeing her father have fun, understanding like, dang, he don't care what everybody else got going on. And, you know, forget the outside world. That's one thing he definitely taught me. It's like, don't care what people say, do you and mind your business. Because at the end of the day, people going to do what they want to do. And they always going to judge you for who you are. And that's what mm -hmm. that's me how to be myself, have fun, and just kind of block outside noise. And also be a God-fearing man and try your best to be understanding. Because a lot of people go through things that we don't know about. So we try to understand it for ourselves in their position. You say, you know what, they probably didn't have a bad day. But you know what, okay, I understand how they feel. You know, stuff like that. That's something he definitely taught me. But one of the main things, have fun. Because you know me, man, I like to joke, you know how I am. I like to have my play my music. I, love yeah. I don't discriminate when it comes to music anything, man. So. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, you you definitely don't discriminate, man. You have everything. <laughs> you have everything playing in the morning. Because we be like, man, <clears throat> because, you know, um, uh, Kenny, you, you 20, 20 what? 26? 27. Okay, 27. So I, I keep on taking that year away. So you you 27, and I, I'm 41. Yeah. So a lot of the music that Kenny listened to, I'm like, like uh, you know what I'm saying? But I, I I'm not I'm just not into it. I'm not saying it's not, but then he plays some songs. I'll be over there. I'm so old. I got to Shazam on to try to see. I'm like, oh, I like that. I'm gonna download that, you know. But uh one thing, uh, it's all about fathers and how um they influence. I know my dad had a huge impact over me. I think mm-hmm. I had one of the best dads in the world that a person could ever have. Right. And um, one thing my dad taught me, man, was just just to be cool. You know, I always just been a cool guy that people want to be around. And um, his influence was so thick in my life because um, he was a God-fearing man. And right. um, we was real heavy off in church. And so um, a lot of that encouraged me to help other guys out that didn't have fathers. Because there was a lot of guys around me that didn't have a dad. And by them not having a father, it was like I had that influence so some of the imp- the way that my father impacted my life, some of the stuff that I could talk to them about, it helped them out too, you right. know. And I think you know, um, <clears throat> with having a father, be honest, as a man, they gonna give you a leg up in life. It take a lot, a lot away, a lot of the learning curve. Some of the stuff you taught on the way growing up, so when you get grown, you ain't gotta learn it. You already know it. It's just embedded in you. You know what I'm saying? And you just like, I already know what to do because I'm already programmed to do this. Like, I'm already set up to be a man. I don't have to learn this. I'm going to just learn how to run my household. But certain stuff I already know, man. Yeah, so it's funny as you said, man, because, you know, I'll never forget one summer. My um, my dad, we lived in country park, a small town called Wilson, man. Population probably 500 people. Uh-huh. Awesome, everything. And I'll never forget on the backside of our house, we had a tree. He said, all right, boy, we got to cut this tree. I'm like, man, I want to cut this tree. It's, it's, it's 100 degrees. You know, right. you got all the bugs going crazy. They jump on you and stuff. And what's got the thick mosquitoes? So they be flying around like your head and stuff. And I never even said, we got to cut this tree. I said, I don't want to cut the tree. You see, you better cut this tree, but we got a problem. And I never understood, you know, but looking back on it, I said, you know what? I do stuff around the house like that that's random or odd to kind of keep things flowing. And I'm like, that's mm-hmm. one of the major things. I didn't want to do it, but I ended up doing it. And now I understand the value of taking care of a household, how to take care of your wife, kind of keep your kids involved so they won't grow up lazy and their own way get stuck in their ways because it's so easy to get stuck in your way and you can't break that. Then that's you know, how you create a generational curse of laziness mm-hmm. and not being motivated. And it can keep going for generations if somebody chooses to break that curse. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's that's good, man. About that, you know, that generational thing, and um, just teaching your kids, you know, and and, and it, it's so crazy that a lot of stuff that we didn't want to do, it's so embedded into us that it's just like it's automatic now. Like yeah. it's automatic that you're gonna go cut your yard, you're gonna go trim them bushes. It's like it's just like it's a given. It ain't like you know it's something I'm think about. It's just a way of life. I know that I got to do this. I know that I got to do that. And I I think that's one of the things that I'm grateful of having a father is that the stuff that he taught me is just second nature to me. You know, it's just stuff as a man I know I'm going to have to do. And so, um, man, I want to ask you this too, man, because you say you got married at 23, man. I know a lot of people had a lot to say, man. So why you get why you get married so young, man? Man. Kind of just, you get tired of just doing the same old, same old. You know, you get tired of going out there. Like my college years, I mean, I had too much fun to where I kind of got derailed and got unfocused to where, you know, I got my wife. She helped me stay focused. She keep me on track. And it was always there being a good man. But I just need a, a strong woman to bring out even more to allow to flourish. You know, and that's one thing she really did for me. And we kind of just sat down and had one serious talk one day. Like, you know what? Do we really want to do really do this, you know? 
And, you know, we kind of thought about it, talked about it, and I surprised her. And I asked her to be my wife one day, and she's like, you serious? I'm like, yeah, you know, I'm, I want to do this. We had a very quiet, intimate moment. And I never forget, we was walking the bridge, and I prayed about it. That's one thing, you know, that, oh, man. She was just praying, and so it's kind of new to me. You know, it's always been there, but it's more or less getting in tune with God. And I just prayed about it one. I said, "Lord, is this something that I'm really ready for?" You know, and prayed about it for a week or so, and I got got the engagement ring, and I proposed on the bridge. A very nice, intimate moment. Saw the lights flashing and everything. Saw the water going through. Peaceful, man. I don't. You know, we want the people where we like things very intimate. We don't like having all the big crowds. We don't need everybody knowing what's going on in business. You know, mm-hmm. we're very intimate. Yeah, I could have got up there and got people come out and show this and show that and all that. No, nah, why be flashy? You know? Yeah. yeah. Want to be grounded and just understand. Mm-hmm. And then, all the people ain't going to be here. It's going to be us in this household. Yeah. <laughs> One thing, good, man. I like, dang, you know what? Let's just do this very intimate, very peaceful moment. To something every time I drive past that bridge, I'm like, dang, that's where I started. Yep. Yeah, yeah, and that, that's what made me want to get married, man. Is just seeing seeing love is out there, especially for young people. You know, it's all about what you want. If you go out there looking for something you got no business looking forward to, you're gonna find it. But you find yep. something you really, really want, and you pray about the person you want, and you ask God, you know, to give you guidance to understand how this person operates. He'll give it to you most definitely wholeheartedly. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm in totally uh, agreement with that, and um, I'm glad you're so young to to understand that because a lot of older people don't even understand how to pray for understanding on how to deal with your wife. Yeah, you know, and um, a, a, a lot of guys they just think that um, because uh, and, and I, I'll be let me have a transparent moment here. Yeah. Is that when you think that um you're supposed to deal with your significant other like you did with everybody else, your marriage is gonna fail. Yeah. If you take other people's advice, your marriage is gonna fail. The the best thing to do is like when you pray for that understanding and learn how to deal with her on your level. And y'all be able to communicate through that. That's one of the best things that you can do within a marriage. And that's what's gonna keep your marriage together, you know what I'm saying? For for real. So yeah, right there. That was some good stuff right there, man. Young yeah. Kenny is in the building, man. Mr. Mixologist is in the building. So, but look, man, I got um I got another question, man. You know, yeah. we got not only we got a gender division going on. What about the age gap, man? What's the what's the what, what's one of the biggest disconnect between my age group and your age group? The the young grasshoppers and the old heads, man. <laughs> so, <laughs> man, it's kind of funny because I'm starting to get up there now, man. I'm almost thirty. It's kind of ah, oh, man, get up. <laughs> <laughs> we are. Uh, uh, hey, you know, one of the biggest disconnects is is more or less um. How can I put it in there? I mean, I was going to be be wrong and good. This is who I am. Yeah. More or less, older people don't know how to mind their business. Mm, go and, there. You know, that's kind of something I've been dealing with in my own little life and spectrum to kind of grow in pains, to grow from people. You know, mm-hmm. so a lot of older people don't know. They, you know, understand what's not their business is not their business. Right. Yeah. And that's one thing, you know, my uncle taught me. He was like, you know, don't let everybody come sweeping at your front door because it only brings distractions. It brings unwanted attention. Mm-hmm. You don't want that to where, like you said, you know, early, you know, people trying to give you advice on things and they ain't got they self put together. So how can you give me some type of advice? Yeah. You don't have self put together, you know, to where. You know, I hear older folks talking about, man, you know, y- y'all ain't up to nothing. Y'all ain't no good. Y'all don't do nothing right. Mm-hmm. Y'all taught us. that. Y'all was the generation mm. taught this stuff. So now the only thing, the best example we got is y'all, and y'all didn't do too good of setting a good example. Now I will admit, 
like you, for example, man, mm -hmm. you're a great guy. You always been solid, man. Your words of wisdom I has all I always took that consideration no matter what it is. Mm -hmm. You know, I can never learn too much. And to where there's other old school people out there that do the same thing, give me great advice. You know, I love listening to the older black men, not even just black men in general. Yeah. Like mm -hmm. older people that gives advice from all different genres of walks of life. Yeah. Like, you know what? If you have the open ears, you know, and the open mind about it. Oh man, you can learn a whole lot, but that's mm -hmm. that's one of the big things that the disconnect. A lot of old people know how to mind their business, understand this not my business. Let me step away. This young man probably actually got something going on for himself. Who knows? But a lot mm -hmm. of them don't think like that. They think, oh no, nah, you just out here, you just trying to do this and do that, and you ain't worried about it, you ain't focused, all that stuff. Mm -hmm. I do sit there and just say, all right, I totally understand. Cause I ain't got nothing nice to say while I say something at all. Yeah, yeah. I, man, I I agree with you. Yeah. And and I think I think that comes from not having enough business of your own. Yeah. I think that where it comes from because one thing I I learned and I had to learn this too, and my wife said I still do it too much, and that's to give unsolicited advice. I got that bad. I ain't you, know, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, and, and like uh, when I when I when I be talking to you and I'll be like, you know, you be talking about your daughter and I'll be like, man, you maybe can do this with her and this and that. Yeah. And my wife be like, he ain't ask you for all that, baby. I was like, I know he's just a young man. And, you know, I just want to help him out. He like, he ain't ask you, though. <laughs> and, and sometimes when you older, um, you have to kind of pick your poison. But yeah. then sometimes it don't come off as help. It come off as I'm better than you. Right. And I and I think that's where a lot of young people get um, offended when it comes off as like, oh, well, you should be doing this. Oh, we, we ain't do that when we was young. Or I ain't <laughs> act like that when I was young because it's a different time. They didn't have social media back then. Mm -hmm. You know, they had VHS. They didn't have cell phones, you know. Yeah. Cell phones didn't really get popular, like real popular, until like 2001. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Just real popular like that because everybody still had a house phone. True. You know what I'm saying? And so part of that disconnect is like understanding that this new generation is going to do it a, a different way because we living in different times. Right. And so I, I think the older people, like, not only uh, we should not only give advice, but I think give it in doses. Yeah. Because I, I, I think this, and I might be wrong, but let me know what you think about it, Kenny. Yeah. If I come to you and I try to give you your your daughter from when she was first born all the way till she get into high school, how that's going to help you? You're not at that high school or that middle school phase. You at this phase. Right. So if I give you the information for this phase, that's something you can use now because when your daughter get older, things going to be di different from when my kids is in high school. You know what I'm saying? It is. So, so whatever was happening right now, I can help with that, but I can't give advice down the road. So what you think about that? You think that the what's going on now, instead of giving 15 years down the road, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I'm more or less wanted now because you know, like you said, man, 15, 20 years from now, I don't even know what's going to look like my own self. Right. And crazy, like, you know, <clears throat> one thing, too, a lot of people get overstimulated. You know, yeah. they yep. keep, so get so frustrated with all the information coming in, <clears throat> the overload within them, and that's where you get that people that shut off on you, and or they just go off flat out, depending on who you're dealing with. Yeah. And, like, try giving doses, because I kind of catch myself doing it. And I try to slow it down. Come on, I might do the same thing too. Like, why are you telling all these people all this stuff? Like, yeah. well, you know, I just I, I'm gonna give them person. And mm -hmm. you know, it's just more or less, you know, give them a doses so they can understand, like, hey, I'm not trying to overwhelm you, but you know, this is what you I suggest for you, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And that's what do it being an old school cat that kind of do it that way, because you know. You're not overwhelming me. Even if you try to give me information for like 15 years later, I don't mind it. But it's all about you being thoughtful. Like, hey, you know what? Yep. He's probably not going on as it is. You mm -hmm. know, he's father dealing with a kid and all this stuff. 
let him learn, bump his head a little bit. And if you say something that catch my attention, then I can say a little bit more and feed more into it. Mm -hmm. And see, that's, that's one of the things like, you know, when we was working together, you know, um, I, I'll speak to you and talk, you know, and listen or whatever, but I never had an in-depth conversation with you until I learned a little bit more about you so I can learn my approach, you know, and I think some people, they don't learn people first before they start approaching them. Mm -hmm. You just come with some information and you don't even know this person, right. you know, so I, I watch and listen for a little bit and I'll be like, oh, he, because see me, I, I take this, I listen to this scripture too, man. Don't cast your pearls before swine. And I'm not saying people are swine, but I have to understand where you're coming from because what I went through to get the information that I got, I don't just pass it on and give it to anybody. You know what I'm saying? I don't just pass it on, but I see this young man trying to do for his family, trying to, okay, I give him a piece of jewelry. You know what I'm saying? Because he ain't going to take it for granted. He going to take it. Put it in his little treasure chest, you know what I'm saying? Because it's something valuable to him. Some people just go, hey, man, whatever, old school, keep it moving, mm -hmm. you know? But, you know, it, it is what it is, man. So let me yeah. let me ask you this, Kenny. Okay. Right now, if you could talk to a young man right now, what's one piece of advice you'll give him about life? Oh, man, one piece of advice. Yeah, one piece of advice. Oh, okay. I put it like this. Move at your own pace, don't but don't move too slow. If that makes sense, you know. Yeah, that's good. Like, you know, you can you can do everything you can while you're young, making mistakes, all that stuff. But once you get to that certain age, those mistakes become costly mistakes. And if you don't fix those costly mistakes, those mistakes are gonna pack you for the rest of your life. And don't you let don't let you have kids because it's gonna make a worse on to the end too. You know, if you can learn from your mistakes while you're young, fix them while you're young, then when you're older, you know, you like, hey, this life ain't, you know, this life ain't so bad. You know, you always hear people saying, you know what, dang man, life is hard, life sucks. I agree, but it's all about what you make of it too. You can make it hard on yourself for no reason. You know, trying to go out there, be flashy, get this latest, greatest this, latest, greatest that. Doing all this stuff. Yeah, it does feel good to make yourself feel good by buying those materialistic things. Mm -hmm. And got the coin. My mom said the best and my dad said to you out here playing with Kool-Aid money with wine taste. <laughs> you know, you, right. Everybody want to be that guy. But mm -hmm. why hurt yourself trying to be that guy? Move at your own pace, you know, make little mistakes in life. And once you get older, you get elevated past some mistakes. Yeah. And now you live a lavish. Mm -hmm. That's what I give you. You know, move at your own pace, but don't move too slow. Cause man, time it speeds up. And you look like, dang, I was just 19. Now I'm 30. Then yep. so you're 30, now I'm 60. Like, dang, time just gone just like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So and uh, and I'm a I'm a I'm a tag along with you know something that you said I'm gonna piggyback on that because uh, I'm a prime example of that you know because um uh, my twenties or whatever you know I spent a lot of time doing nothing you know what I'm saying yeah. partying and having fun but when I got to my thirties it's crazy you know once I finish once I stop drinking you know within you know. Within uh, five years, my life totally changed. Mm -hmm. Five years, you know, in a whole different place, you know, mentally, financially, spiritually, in a whole different place. But, you know, I could have been further down the road for what it did when I was younger. Right. So all the young men, I, I know that hanging out and all that, they look enticing. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, you probably have uh, hangovers, memories and less money. That's true. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, you have a lot of good laughs with your friends, a lot of good memories and this and that. Yeah, you have a lot. I, I got a lot of stories to tell. Right. Me and my homeboys. Yeah, I got a lot of stories to tell. But I'll tell you this. What's even better is the memories that your children have. Mm -hmm. The When they say, well, we went here. And daddy, you remember this happened. Daddy, when that happened. It means a little bit more. It hits different. Because your friends... 
they might go their separate ways. You might not talk to them, whatever the case might be. Not that y'all fall out. You know, y'all just might be living different lives and, you know, y'all just um, grow apart. It ain't nothing personal or nothing, but your children are going to always be there and they're going to always remember the good and the bad. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> hey, yeah. no, it's funny. Yeah. And man, because like, man, my wife, I swear my wife and I were just talking about this earlier today, man. Mm-hmm. Just doing those memories, those core memories, you know, to where, you know, my daughter for her first birthday, she's one years old. We took her to Branson to mm-hmm. let's see the fishes, the turtles, and all this stuff. For her second birthday, we just took her to Atlanta Aquarium and everything. Mm-hmm. And she, her face is lit up like she loved fishes. And that's one thing, you know, you want to build those core memories. Now, don't get me wrong. I do like to go out there and have fun with my friends and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. But I count how many hands, um, not how many hands, but on one hand, I can count how many times I've been out this whole year. Yep. And last year, I've probably been out four times. Mm-hmm. And every time for a friend's birthday or celebrating a milestone that he accomplished or this other friend accomplished. Mm-hmm. That's, I don't do the clubs. The club's not me. Yeah, you know, you know, I'm a bartender and everything. I like socializing people, but at the same time working, so I'm building connections. So it makes my time valuable and valuable equals more time and money, money where I can provide and put it to my family mm-hmm. and I'm community too. But that's one thing right there, you know, versus going out there kicking out and all this stuff. I can build these cool memories with my kids. Yep. I remember my father. You know, he was the same way. Never go out. Always in the house. He go out with his friends here and there every blue moon, but mm-hmm. I just remember, I remember the smallest thing. We went camping one night in the front yard and saw stars. Like, dang, this is cool, you know. I'm a little kid that's looking up at stars, mm-hmm. you know, and hot dogs and everything. It was cool, man. You know, stuff like that. And you know, I could say this even for the older people, you know, that's watching out there and everything. The time you have with your kids now, cherish it because when they get older, they ain't gonna want to be around you. And I, it's funny, I can kind of say it because my daughter, she too. I'm, I was been holding her like this in my hand. They said, now she's like, Daddy, don't touch me. Daddy, move. I said, What in the world? You just too, girl. <laughs> <laughs> right. Hey. I said, Dang, well, I guess I know what's going to happen when you turn nine to 10. You mm-hmm. know, what I'm doing, but I know she always had that daddy love for me. Yeah. And that's one thing I just want everybody to stand. Man, no clubs going to be out there. Shoot. Them, them people that's going to be in the same, it's going to literally be people in the same spot at the bar it was two years ago sitting there drinking. Yep, with- yep. that's true. And that's the crazy thing about it, man. I ain't trying to hold you up too much longer, but you know. No, you're good. But it's just more or less the fact that, you know, those same people, they still in the same position. Why would you try to surround yourself around people that's not like that? You know, that's mm-hmm. well, not like that, but on the same type of time, you know? Why not mm-hmm. try to relate yourself, you know? go be a family man you ain't gotta be out there all the time and try to kick it and stuff man it's gonna be there you know take care of your wife if your wife needs you and she vocalizing she needs you you need to listen because at the end of the day she got you them other folks don't them folks is there for a temporary time of satisfaction mm-hmm. but the day, your wife she's gonna be there and then she's gonna understand what you need what you don't need she's gonna take care of you and that's what that's what the vows are for you know, yep. I want people to understand, man. Don't don't worry about them clubs. Don't worry about you know trying to go chase this and that. If you marry, man, be a family man. And that's mm-hmm. the best place in the world being a family man, taking care of your kids. And I'm just gonna put this out there too. You know, I sacrifice on how I look to make sure my kids kids look good. Yep. And I don't care. I wear buddies all day. I can wear. <laughs> Hello, hello, kid. You said, Well, buddies, man. Everyone said, Buddies, man. <laughs> hey, you know, I'm walking around with my poster shoes on and all that. They squeaking and stuff. And yeah. I'm wearing the street clothes. I'm sacrificing for this little one to look better than me. I don't care about what I got. As long as that little one or the other one I got on the way is taken mm-hmm. care of, that all that matters in my life. I don't care how I look. Should I go out now? I might need a hair carry now and then, but hey, I sacrifice myself, man. That's the, that's the thing about being a man in life. You know, you yeah. sacrifice your time, you sacrifice your time, you sacrifice what you need to do for yourself sometimes. 
Cause that's what it is, man. Just being a man about it. Yep. You know, and I kind of feel like some people might need to hear that. Don't know, but a guy mm-hmm. was positions to speak to people that might need to hear it. Oh yeah, oh yeah, man. Yeah, man. Say your piece, man, because I um I I want you to say your piece because as a young black man and you doing it, you actually living in life. You're not speaking from, oh man, I'm just on here talking because you on here, you out there living, you know? So that's, that's two different things. So that, that means a lot because people can look at your life and see that you actually live in that. And I want to have young men to come out as living that life. So other young men that see this, any young men, that come on here and watch this or any young lady that come on here and watch this that you can have that life too you can do the same thing you know and yeah. so man i'm gonna um i'm gonna go ahead man and wrap this up now let me ask you this kenny because kenny you don't you don't watch you don't watch no sports now you do basketball right i do basketball a little bit of football here and there ah, okay man. okay okay because yeah man i don't never hear you talk about no no football smack because i talk a lot of football smack so yeah, okay, okay, okay. I ain't, I ain't gonna get into it, dude. But yeah, okay. So since since you do watch basketball, so give me this then. Mm-hmm. Give me, give me, give me, give me, give me your top five basketball players. Oh man, your top five, man. No, not in no particular order. And I, we we gonna leave we gonna leave the eighties and back out of it. Oh, okay, 80s. Uh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, we're gonna leave that out. So we're gonna we're gonna do we're gonna do uh we're gonna do late 80s and up. Okay. The 2020. Well, I kind of got to slide in number one. To be honest, oh man, I know Bill Russell might not be in that category, but I gotta say Bill Russell for uh-huh. sure. Okay, so Bill Russell. Well, we'll we'll do that. we'll do all of them. So you got Bill Russell, okay. number one. Okay. Okay, because and then I gotta say Brian, man, and Brian that had like four or five different stages in his career, where he done had Hall of Fame careers, four yeah. different stages in his career. That's crazy. Mm-hmm. Um, of course, of course, you gotta say Kobe. You know, Kobe. Okay, Kobe. Yeah. Yeah, Kobe got the mentality, that dog, that mom in him. Mm-hmm. Definitely got that dog. Definitely got that dog. So we got Wilt, we got LeBron, we got Kobe. We got two more. Dang. I want to say Will Chamberlain, but shit, we don't know. We only know he scored a hundred points. They show everything else on TV, but don't show the hundred points. So I ain't gonna say right. that. But hey, I got two more. Got two more, man. Oh man, I might get a little scrutiny for this one. Dirt. Is definitely one of those guys. Dirk, okay. Dirk the whiskey, okay. Oh, Dirk. Dirk is definitely up there. Dang, last one. Last one, man. I kind of want to say Carmelo on a cool. I could say Melo, yeah. Carmelo. Melo. Yeah. Right, so we got we got Walt, we got LeBron, we got Kobe, yeah. we got um, Carmelo, and we got Dirk. Yeah. That's what's up, man. Okay, cool, 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 yeah. man. Now hold on, man. I, I let me let me do my top five, man. <clears throat> Listen, I got Jordan, got Kobe, got LeBron, and got AI. Gotta put my AI in there. And my boy Shaq, man. That's my top five right there. Oh, That's my top five. Jordan, Kobe, LeBron, AI, Shaq. Yeah. Man, you know what? I'm gonna throw in one new school guy. <laughs> and Anthony Edwards. Uh, I got Anthony to... Edwards. I, I can't put him in there yet. I gotta yeah. see some more. I gotta he... see some more from. Him. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I I gotta see I gotta see Anthony, man. I gotta see him on um because his first playoff run right here, I think he was young. Yeah. So he going into this next playoff run coming up into his next season. I want to see what he really got, and then you know I judge him. You know I got I got to have a few years to put you on the list, man. I can't just throw you on the list, man. You you got to have some championships. You got to have some playoffs. You got to have some buzzer beaters. You know what I'm saying? He getting there. Man. He did for Team USA, putting the boys on his back a little bit with the help of Curry and Bron and K. I forgot about KD. 
dang. Well, it's all good though, man. But yeah, KD definitely up there. Man, I, you, you should be a top ten. <laughs> now, <laughs> so you wanna do a top ten again? <laughs> I said Curry. I said KD. Of course, uh-huh. Brian, of course, Shaq. Uh, AI, of course. Then turn around. You want to put another dominant force in there? You slick and kind of say like Charles Barkley on the on the cool. Yeah, Charles- I, got, I I can't I can't hate on him. He might act a certain type of way, but I can't hate on his basketball skills. Yeah, basketball skills. He was a dog. Yeah, stupid. Um, if he really didn't get a, didn't get hurt. Oh man. Oh, I want to say. Tim Hardaway, not Tim, not, not Tim Hardaway, but um, dang, I'm drawing a blank. Not Trace Trace McGrady can put up there. Mm-hmm. Dang, I'm drawing a blank. Talking about Hardaway, Anthony Hardaway, Penny Hardaway. Oh yeah, uh, yeah, Penny Hardaway. Uh, Grant Hill, which one? Penny Hardaway. Ah, oh, Penny Hardaway. Ah, oh, okay. Yeah, yeah Hardaway, Hardaway would have been the truth if he didn't get hurt, man. So. We'll see, man. I Kenny said he won't switch from a top five. You can't be you can't come on real men talk change the rule. I said top see that what's wrong with you, youngster now on the change. <laughs> That's what's up, man. So listen, man. I appreciate you coming on, man, taking out part of your time. Tell the wife I want to apologize for running a little bit late. But before we get off, man, I want you to get the people you know, uh, how they can find you on social media. Give me a telephone, email, how they can reach you and book you, man. Gotcha. So, yeah, man, y'all can find me on Instagram, Facebook at D Nixologist, T H E N I X X O L O G I S T, on pretty much Facebook and Instagram. And the same thing applies to my email at D Nixologist at gmail.com. If you can't find my you know, my name, I know a little long, but it represents my family and all this. It represents me. But my phone number is 501-313-10056. Like I said, I take care of y'all, man. I'm the best bartender in the state. Use all, my, like I said, I might change it to Mr. Organic. <laughs> you know? Yeah, man. Listen, man. Y'all, y'all got to check him out. He been on the news, man. He even had the news anchor sipping on, on the news now. What boy the truth, man. He had the news anchor sipping. You know what I'm saying? Feeling good after she left. But yeah, man, I appreciate that everybody from tuning in. And uh, we'll see y'all next week. Peace. Yes, sir, man. Bro, I, I appreciate you, man. Tell the All wife right. I'm sorry, man. I'm running, I'm running late.